we drink tequila, we talk. Welcome to Team Tequila Talks. Talk, talk. Right. We are so excited and I'm so jealous because I'm dialing in from Atlanta and I'm looking at these three beautiful bottles of Homo's tequila that you have and we have just been dying to chat with you guys and I have to be out of town for it, of course, because that's the way that the world works out sometimes. But you have your hosts, Cassandra Jean Amell and Sherry Gonzalez. Welcome to Team Tequila Talks. As I mentioned, we are so excited to have Homos and learn a bit more about their very unique tequila offerings. And joining us is Sabrina Manks, the Los Angeles Market Manager, and Rhea Soler, the Director of Education and Advocacy. I have to say that I would love the official title of Tequila Advocate. So I mean, welcome, guys. <laughs> can yeah. we make, can we just add that? Maybe we should, we should add that as our title, Tequila Advocate. Because I do honorific. feel like, yes, honorific tequila advocate. Mm -hmm. you just honorific gave us, advocate. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. I love it. I love, it. I love, it. I love it. Which is then probably then like, yes, first. We start off every episode cheers. of Team Tequila Talks with the cheers. I'm just waiting for the episode that we forget. It hasn't happened yet, but you know. It hasn't happened yet. I almost jumped the gun because I'm just so excited. That's Can a great way to trade? start an episode. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we try. We have just, is this cobalt blue, sea blue, cobalt deep sea blue? No, you were right the first time. Okay, okay. Yeah, cobalt. Cobalt blue, we are drinking, which is what I find is all the craze right now in the tequila market. I mean, you are seeing Anejo Cristalinos pop up like weeds and your brand has a very special one and it is um, tequila comos. And I find when you, I was watching the NBA finals and they kept running other brands and I text Cassandra and I said, you know, what's so strange with Comos is like, you either know or don't know. And I feel like it's more word of mouth. You guys don't have to be really loud in a loud market. You're kind of sophisticatedly quiet, but it kind of works. Um, I love you. I did not pay you to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly how we want to go about our business. You know, no celebrities. Uh, we think that the juice speaks for itself, uh, the people of Mexico, and then, you know, our pretty special processes, we think on how we get to what's in that bottle. As you say, Cristalino is actually the fastest growing segment in Mexico um, amongst Mexicans. Like it's what all the young people are drinking is our Cristalino tequilas, you know, and you're seeing, as you said, them pop up more and more in the U.S. We think we have a very special point of difference in that we age in French oak wine barrels. So that Añejo Cristalino is actually aged in French oak white wine barrels from Napa Valley from some really prestige producers. French oak's like 10 times more expensive than American oak. Oh, like, I'd imagine. Yeah, oh, big bougie. time. It's, a, remember, it's bougie. It's limousin. Oh, oh. Kind of, oh what, what, what word is that? Limo, limousin. Think like limousine, but you say it like you're really French. Oh, limousin. 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 So it comes from the limousin forest in France. <laughs> um, She's fluent. So. You're fluent in French. We're jealous. Hey, I, officially. We were well, just, that's why we're you sound so good saying it. I mean, oh, we're, well, we're over here you. trying to you know, <laughs> limousin. Limousin. You nailed it. You absolutely <laughs> nailed it. Uh, yeah, so white wine barrels. You know, the, these barrels come from France, but then um, they're used to age really delicious Chardonnay. I like to call it cougar juice. You know, like that really big kind cougar of Cougar juice. Opulent... <laughs> I, you know what? Look, I feel like moms are one of the fastest growing tequila and chill group. Yes. That, I mean, we used to be college kids, right? And then we all had kids. And then it's like, how do you keep a little bit of that? What with some elegance and sophistication and like premiumization? Yep. You got it. Is that a word? Yep. That's a well, real word. You did it. <laughs> Those bottles certainly look premiumized. You and your words, <laughs> Sherry. Those bottles, I mean, they, they look elegant. They look like something that you would want to be drinking, not just as a mom, but as anybody who wants to sip on something and feel like their game is elevated as a whole. I feel like mission accomplished on the aesthetic front. Thank you. And to kind of touch on the bottles, um, they not only look very special, but they are very special. Um, 
They're actually handmade in Mexico City. Uh, we um, chose to have them handmade in Mexico City for a couple of reasons. One, to reduce our carbon footprint um, and also to employ more Mexicans in Mexico. So we'll get into some more of our kind of environmental measures that, uh, that we're doing uh, with Comos in Mexico in a bit. But the bottles are handmade. Um, they also are... Uh, are cast with a heat reactive glaze. So you'll notice, especially with the um, the Reposado Rosa, that each bottle has um, a unique kind of differentiation to it. So that some of them get a little streaky and some of them are like super baby soft pink. So I think it's a really, um, you know, for being a craft artisanal tequila, I think it's a really unique way to express an art form. And we encourage upcycling with all of our bottles. We do not want these works of art going into the trash. No, no, never. So it's so funny that you say that because I mentioned a minute ago to Sherry that I had a hard time finding the Cristalino because it is the hot thing here. And where I went, it was sold out. And I went to another place and it was sold out. And I was able to get the Rosado, but I don't actually have the bottle with me because I had somebody say, can I please take this bottle and make sure. something out of it and turn it into a vase or something? Yeah, so I don't have yeah. the bottle. I only have the actual tequila. I put it in a jar. I know that's probably blasphemous. <laughs> Hilarious. No, no, no. We are we are not fussy. Listen, this is a really elegant brand. As you said, it's like no comos. That's actually our hashtag. I swear we did not pay you. Really? Yes, you really you named it. Wow. Um, so it is like, if you know, you know, right. Um, but we also are not fussy. So if you want to drink, you know, the, the Reposada Rosa out of a bell jar, have at it, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get to that because I was researching Richard Betts, who is the owner of this brand, but I want to get back to the bottles. Cause I do feel like sometimes tequila brands put a lot of effort into their bottle and a little less into the juice. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, you have a client or you have a wedding or you have a baby or something where you need to bring a gift and you're like, I'm going to bring that bottle. And then your girlfriend's like, yeah, no, it, it, the bottle was pretty, but it wasn't very good. Yeah. I think that that's some bottles are designed to be presented and designed to look like a gift, but there are other bottles that you just want to grab on your way to a party because it's the stuff you actually want to drink. And it's like, well, where's the in-between? Where's the marriage of the two? Where's something that is affordable enough that I can grab it if I want to drink it on a Saturday? It doesn't have to be a wedding present. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, it's beautiful. And I can make this a thing. I can, I can present this. And I feel like Comos does an amazing job of that. Oh, thank oh. you. Yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely what they're made for. And it's funny you said like wedding, baby shower, like the color scheme for these, you know, you've got yeah. that cobalt blue, the turquoise and the pink, it kind of sells itself. It's, like it's, it's not, it's a good color. But look, they're pretty. Yeah. You got and, your boy, you know, your girl, and you're gender neutral for all there of you go. Oh, there. look at you guys. I mean, Como's leading, Covering leading in the, the social conscious basis. I love that. <laughs> but wait, get back Cristalino, because I, I want our guests to learn what makes it a Cristalino. I know we talked about the French oak wine barrels, mm -hmm. but talk about the filtration. How yeah. does it get removed that Anejo color? Yeah, absolutely. I always liken it to the Brita filter in your house, right? Or the filter that's in your refrigerator. You are not just going and drinking water out of the top. If you are, I mean, I'm not judging, but probably you're not. I'm judging. Okay. And <laughs> that a Brita filter is using activated charcoal, right? And that activated charcoal is taking out um, all of the gunk that's in the water, you know, that funky smell, maybe some weird, you know, chemical compounds that are left in there. We are using activated charcoal in the same way to make this Cristalino. Now that's not the only way to make Cristalino tequila. You can use other methods. You can use cardboard. Um, you can use cellulose. Um, so there are other ways, but using activated charcoal well, you're going to find the through line for us is if it's the most expensive way to make something, generally that's how we want to make it because it's the best way, not just because it costs the most money, but because we're getting the best results, the best product. So using that activated charcoal takes longer, more expensive, but it, what it does is it really gently takes out a lot of the congeners, um, chemicals that are going to give you that kind of, I always call it tequila face where somebody goes, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> Uh, a lot of the tannin from the wine barrels, um, a, a lot of the stuff that might make you feel a little headachey the next day if you're having too much tequila, but what it leaves in is all of those rich barrel notes. You know, there's a real butterscotch quality to this, vanilla, tropical fruit, and that's all, you know, that's, that's not additives. That's all coming from the barrels and from the tequila. So, so. you are not injecting 
pineapple notes, vanilla oh, notes into your, <laughs> which is amazing. And I know, am I saying this right? Amphorae, amphora? Amphora. Amphora. Mm-hmm. That's, is that the Mediterranean aspect of this? I know it's Mediterranean inspired. Well, it's the winemaking techniques are Mediterranean, right? And then the amphora, absolutely. Those are ancient winemaking vessels. Um, they look like big terracotta vases, essentially. Um, they're used a lot in natural wines still today. We're using them as one of the methods to um, basically introduce micro oxygen and talking about words I can't say, <laughs> micro oxygenation. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> um, you, sound good, you sound good saying it. Drinking tequila <laughs> makes the words flow oh, better. It's it's a, say it in French. Say it in French. Me- Oh, oxygenization. <laughs> that actually like, wasn't. I like where your lips like puckered up. Like, your whole you. face got very bougie when got, you said that. You had tequila <laughs> face. You had yes. tequila yes. face when you said it. Face. The good tequila yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, yeah. here on Team Tequila Talks, we actually talk a lot about ways to avoid a hangover. And we more or less say, if you have a hangover, you're doing something wrong. Because you do not have to have a hangover, especially when you are drinking a quality product, which I think we can see that we're working with a quality product here. And a hangover can be contributed to a variety of things. It could be a lack of overall wellness, meaning that you're not hydrating properly, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about just the drinks, it's are we adding a bunch of sugars? Are we adding a bunch of unnatural additives or flavors? Are we adding in anything that's going to be inflammatory are we adding in anything neon because it's certainly not natural to drink neon colored cocktails you guys are really in line with what we're saying where if you're looking at how you're filtering this and you're not putting in anything else you're keeping it clean you're keeping it simple you can drink this you're not going to be hungover yes that is exactly what we're saying. I mean, <laughs> if you drink, if you take a whole bottle of tequila to the face, I mean, I that's mean, on you, but you know, <laughs> legit, it's not hangover proof. It's tequila, but, um, right, right. but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that we're on the same page that it, you know, it's, you're, you're going to be less susceptible to having that, um, that level of intensity the next day. If you're drinking something like this on the rocks with soda water and just keeping it really simple. Because I find when you have good tequila, that's made well with the consumer's body in mind and taste and like all those tasting notes and flavor, you don't want to mix your really good tequila with like orange juice. I mean, you can, but I, it's like this, I would not mix. I I mean, I will say it makes a killer espresso martini. (gasps) Okay. I'm just, I I get it. I'm, I'm normally, you know, this with soda water, I love because it brings out all of those vanilla notes, but there's no sugar. So it almost tastes to me like a, like a cream soda, but with right. But with no like added sugar, which I love, but if you're going to splurge and it's about to be a big night out an espresso martini with this, it it cannot be. It's really, really special. It's uh, Mm -hmm. I, I, I was not an espresso martini drinker uh, before. And I, that that's kind of the cocktail I treat myself self with with this if I'm like she said if we've got a a a big event and we're kind of you know going to one of our um accounts and having a drink I I definitely if it's good craft cocktail program order an espresso martini with this wow with the Anejo okay yeah and Uh, and Anejo Cristalina and espresso martinis espresso I call it espresso because that's just the way I say it (laughs) espresso espresso martinis have made the biggest comeback oh it's crazy my aunt she's 70s six years old. And she was like, I cannot stand all these new generations. She's like, everyone's like, have you ever heard of an espresso uh, martini? And I'm like, this is so amazing. She's like, I was drinking that when I was like 15 girl. Yeah. And it's like (laughs) funny what's old is new again. And then you're using these older techniques to kind of take a spin on something that's a little bit classic. I feel like Anejo's are kind of a classic kind of tequila. A lot of people love that. People say, don't mess with my Anejo. Do you think it's controversial? Ooh, controversial cocktail. Do you think Cristalino is a purist or kind of like, what are they doing to my Anejo? No, you know, we are so not fussy. Again, and I know you brought up Richard Betts and I definitely want to get back to him because somebody that really understands luxury, but also understands not being fussy, that is who he is. So, you know, if somebody says, hey, I would never, it's like, well, then don't. You know what I mean? It's like, if they bring low rise jeans back, I'm going to say, well, I will never, you know, it's a no for me. (laughs) It's a a 
hard pass. <laughs> but if, if other people look cute and they want that, you know, for themselves. I was gonna I'm say I it. might be in. I don't know. I did really well in the in you the did, early did you? <laughs> we, we support that. Yeah. I I can't go you? back. Uh uh-uh. uh I can't go back. <laughs> Listen, I got, I got maybe not little... for the aesthetic but for the nostalgia. Okay. Maybe just maybe oh, sure. give it to me from time to time. You're allowed. You're allowed and I'm allowed to have my espresso martini. <laughs> I also, you know, I think it's interesting that you you guys are mentioning, are you messing with the, with a classic? Because I hadn't even heard of the Cristalino until within the last year, I'd say. And I feel like it is a very new movement. And correct me if I'm wrong, or if maybe this has just been boiling under the surface for a while and in the works for a while. But when I bring up Cristalino to most people, they do not know what it is. So I still feel like we're at the forefront of the movement. Correct. Correct. A lot of education to be done. That's why, thankfully, we have jobs. Yes. Um, It's it's a nice job to have. Um, But then also, you know, that the Cristalino expression is regulated by the NOM in Mexico. So that's the same thing as the AOC in France um, that regulates, you know, wine and cheese production. We have the Bureau of Tobacco and Firearms here in the U.S. Lucky us. Lucky us. Darn. Yes. Um, So Cristalino as a category uh, was just kind of classified by the NOM in the past few years. So you're entirely correct because this was something, you know, Herodura started. There was... um, with uh with Don Julio as well, Master de Bell has their Diamante, right? And so this was already happening, but then they said, how do we codify this category? And so that's why on this bottle it says in Yeho Cristalino, it means that every drop of liquid in that bottle has to be at least a year old. So as you see Cristalinos on the shelf, they will have age designations on them. You could have a reposado uh, Cristalino. You could have an extra in Yeho, right? Three plus years Cristalino. Mm-hmm. Cristalino refers to the filtration process not the age you could even have a blanco cristalino you can make a blanco and then if you wanted to i don't know why yeah you could filter it <laughs> and then that would be a blanco cristalino interesting yeah the majority on the market are reposados for for reference but uh yeah absolutely it can be any categorically any of those um, age marks interesting and how long are you aging this anejo cristalino year, year plus so year yeah plus. By, okay. by law anejo obviously has to be a year mm-hmm. so it's a mm-hmm. year plus it's to where you know the barrels really speak to us it's the same way with the reposada rosa um we we age that for 65 days on the nose like exactly because that's where the barrels kind of give that sweet spot between giving and taking you know giving all of the um that's red wine barrels for the reposada rosa Mm -hmm. as someone that is pretty familiar with the wine business Mm -hmm. um and and being involved for in, in a winery for the last 10 years one thing that a lot of people don't know or that is a myth is that just because a bottle of red wine sits on the shelf for 10 years doesn't automatically make it better. So a lot of people think that if you save that red wine for a special occasion and, oh, well, it's aged, so it's going to be amazing and make it more unique and one of a kind. And that's not necessarily the case. It depends on a lot of things, namely the the grape and the the type of wine, etc. But I would imagine that would translate using red wine barrels, that there is really a peak time a peak amount of time that it should sit in those barrels before all of a sudden it could taste kind of sour or vinegary or or something yeah so uh richard that's when he was navigating the trial and error of aging this um as as all good uh folks do when when making aged spirits i think the combination of the fact that we're using french oak barrels the flavor is a lot more intense from those along with having the tannic quality from the red wine grape uh, we're using first and second fill red wine barrels um, that are shipped down a bowl from Napa. So they're quite heavily saturated. You're getting a lot of, um, when I, we, we should probably pour some off. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are we we're sitting here with You guys can catch up with me on the on the. Or at least I am. <laughs> um, exactly. So, uh, so you'll see when we pour this tequila off that it's actually pink in color. And that is from the barrel contact of that French oak Napa Valley, mostly Cabernet barrels. We've got Syrah, Syrah, well, Syrah from uh, from Sonoma, um, and and you know we're pretty transparent about where we get our our barrels from as well because Richard Betts is an ex master sommelier and ex winemaker, right? So he's got these relationships in Napa Valley, you know, in in the wine world that other people do not have. So you know our current barrel selections come from 
Lewis Sellers and Hirsch Vineyards in Sonoma, which are both premier producers. And then, um, you know, we also have some really fun kind of one-off barrels from some crazy interesting producers, Harlan Estates of the world, you know, mm. bottles of wine that are, if you can find them, thousands and thousands of dollars. Wow. So we are going to be doing down the road, because uh, I always say Richard Betts is like an evil genius, but he's not evil. No, he's not. <laughs> not evil. No, he's not. Uh, just he can just genius. be a genius. Yeah. Exactly. Genius. But, yeah. I yeah. like to frame it up with evil I, genius. Well, because it makes it even more interesting. I read a lot of his interviews just researching and I was like, I like this guy. Cause oh, he's yeah. like, do it his do whatever you want with the tequila, however you want it. Approach is kind of like I think what makes more people realize if you get a good tasting, like a good high quality tasting tequila, you can have it however you want it. But I want you to speak about Richard Betts and his entrepreneurial friend who we started the company with yeah joe actually we can see his house from here hi joe hi joe <laughs> can we call him dang he's in new york right now oh, no no he's no. actually in portugal and he's going on to aspen he has a terrible life and we should all feel bad oh, for joe marquesic it's terrible <sighs> for him we'll yes. pray for him but we could go and break into his house right now i mean <laughs> there is there's a cassandra is not if she was here <laughs> she do not tell her to break in anywhere she is not above i saw that little wiggle <laughs> I, I would need about Three or four more of these tequilas, but but maybe I'm don't worry, go. we could get you there. We yeah, you exactly. <laughs> uh, we have Richard Betts, um, an amazing human being, like I said, ex master sommelier, ex winemaker. He also spent the last ten years um, in Mexico making both mezcal and tequila, uh, straw tequila and sombra mezcal. Actually, started a sustainability project with sombra mezcal that we're continuing on a tequila. We can talk about that later. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he and Joe Marchese are great friends and they were drunk on a rooftop in Amsterdam after a wedding. They were just in a wedding in Portugal. Um, but fortunately now there is Comos in Portugal because after the wedding, Joe turned to Richard and said, let's get some great tequila cap off the night. Richard said, there isn't any good tequila in Europe. Joe That's said, well, let's true. change it. It's okay. so true. Right? So I go to Europe. Well, I mean, let's not count the last two years when I say, you know, every year, but generally I go to Europe annually, love it. And I usually just kiss tequila goodbye till I get back stateside because there are no great tequila options. And if you None. do find tequila somewhere, you're you're looking at like Cuervo or maybe Salsa yeah, or something that is just sort of globally passed around. But you can't find anything high quality, including in – and this just goes to show semi-American ignorance. So I'm, I, I apologize to all my Spaniards out there. But you kind of would think that Spain would have tequila because you think, okay, well, there's a, a lot of Spaniard culture that established Mexico and maybe that's, no, that's not the case. They drink rum in Spain. Yeah. They don't drink mm -hmm. tequila. Yeah. And I found that out, you know, the hard way going, I just want like a good margarita. And they were like, ma'am. They're like, mojito? Mojito. Did, did yeah, mojito. 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 Did I hear yeah. <laughs> mojito. Or rum and coke. Or rum, rum and coke, coke with extra sugar at the bottom, like like crystallized sugar at the bottom. So yeah. and you think I feel like yeah. that was a good decision by them to really get into that market. Because, I mean, the bottle looks Mediterranean. The bottle looks And that's, that's exactly why. And again, you guys are spot on with your with your insights into this brand. The, the bottle is meant to not just resonate with the U.S. consumer, which we are the... Uh, you know, we are, we consume more tequila than Mexico in the U S oh, believe California. It. What's that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Have that share for that bottle to, I know <laughs> <laughs> to appeal to a European consumer as well. So we're currently, you know, we were just in France last week together, launching the South of France, hard job, somebody else to do it. Oh my gosh. Oh, so you tired. you yeah. and, 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 and our friend on the Hill, you guys leave terrible lives. It's, it's the worst. Um, oh. and, and, you know, we're in Portugal. We just launched as well in Greece this summer for that whole, you know, party circuit that's through Greece and to Ibiza, you know, because that person is the same person that's, that's here at Soul House. Right. And they're, they're like, well, I guess I just won't like you. I guess I won't drink tequila because I can't get it. Now imagine if you could get it there in that moment and that all of the European people are starting to feel the vibes on it too, because yeah. the bottle resonates, yeah. the winemaking aspect resonates. And then of course they taste the juice. And if they've only ever had Salsa or Montezuma, right. you know, it's, it's, it's not even apples to oranges. It's, right. And know. I do think my European friends sometimes equate like the American habit of tequila and how terrible it is. And they're like, oh, Americans are not refined because they drink this junk, which for all intents and purposes, when I was in college, I was not buying a hundred dollar ball of anything. No. So yes, we were all drinking mixed dose and whatever else they came up with and concocted for well tequila. But I do think now 
Europeans when they do come in town or some of my friends, they're like, if they have it the right way, they understand it a little better and they get like a kind of a, cause they're like wine, wine, wine. And I love, don't get me wrong. I do love wine. There are moments for wine, but to sip tequila is pretty much, I know for me in the last five years is newer, mm-hmm. you know, drinking wine, Netflix and chill. I can pour, I, I poured the Rosa Reposado and watched the show. Yeah. You drink it slower. Mm-hmm. So you only have about one and a half, maybe two or three. <laughs> Depends on the show. Are we watching the whole new season of Stranger Things? Okay. Or Titanic. Right. Or Titanic, <laughs> which, you know, but I feel like people, and I feel like the European crowd, they are a little more, or their brand is a little more refined. And I think this tequila for them, especially Como's would be something that's more acceptable and not like just American junk. Cause they'd be like, some of my friends are like, oh, so tequila is so American. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I also want to ask, I read in Tasting Magazine, you guys had the highest rating, ev- yeah. rating ever, which they uh-huh. do not give to anyone ever. Yeah, we are super, super honored. Um, it's it's especially being a you know craft artisanal and growing brand. It's um you know huge for us and also a, just a great opportunity to share with the world kind of some of the things that we're doing at Comos. Uh so Tasting Panel magazine did rate um actually we we haven't gotten to tasting it yet, but the extra añejo as the only perfect score rated tequila ever. So they gave this ever. 100 points. So they've never given a perfect score. They've never given 100 points to any tequila before. So we got 100 points on our extra añejo. And then um, these babies did not do, do so bad either. We each got 98 on those two. So we are uh. actually the highest rated portfolio ever given by Tasting Panel Magazine, which is wild thinking you know the 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 buzzy tequila names that i you know we we all know what they are um but we we hear them and see them everywhere and then we're like you said that one that's like oh if you know comos then you know it but it's uh we're we're the one that's getting you know that those those insane uh marks and recognition so it's um it's really exciting uh and it, you know, once you, once we get to, I mean, you've tasted these, you can absolutely see why they would get 98 points. Then when you taste this, it's just like a, an epiphany. It's extra. Damn I'm it. Extra. I'm so mad I'm not there. <laughs> we'll, we'll send you some. We'll send sure. you some. Look, I would give these, being that me and Cassandra are honorific tequila advocates yes. and also panelists. I would also give this a hundred. I don't know you. what the hell they weren't smoking i think a thousand i mean yeah. hello if i was in college and got a 98 on anything i'm like winning so you guys are kind of like walking into can lion like hi hi new kids on the block but also very like on point yes. with our process of making this tequila yes and we actually have a, a huge um article in the next um, sustainability issue of Tasting Panel Magazine, like a four-page spread interview with Richard um, talking about, and myself a little bit. Hey. Um, a little bit. Yeah. Um, She's talking humble. <laughs> just so y'all know. There's a huge picture of me, um, and I swear you guys are going to laugh, but it says I'm really big above my head, fish. <laughs> fish because fish because there's a whole story i don't want to give it away about how richard started this project of repurposing agave fiber and water waste right into bricks to give back to the community he was fishing with a kid in oaxaca and he the kid had never fished before it was after they had you know they buried the agaves to roast and he said well i'm going to take you out fishing and then they went into the river and they couldn't fish because the river was so choked up with agave fiber and because the water that comes off of the process from making um, agave spirits is very acidified, it kills things in the water, right? It creates algae blooms. So he had this idea because he wanted to teach this kid how to fish. How do we get this out of these waterways? And that's where he came up with this brick project, repurposing into bricks to give back to the community in Oaxaca to build housing and infrastructure. They're basically just baked in the sun. It's dirt, the acidified water, and the agave fiber. So it says teaching the tequileros how to fish, which is amazing. <laughs> However, it says fish above my head really big. And so. I'm sure you have a cute smile on like, oh, I'm working this it, fish. It's like this. Oh, perfect. Uh-huh. That's actually the perfect pose for it. <laughs> so I have a question <laughs> because, you know, I, I feel like we've learned a good chunk about the tequila itself, but how does someone get in your role? What's your background that led you to being a tequila educator and advocate? 
Oh, well, that's a great question. I think for both of us, we come from hospitality backgrounds. So I think that's really important, you know, being in a role like this, because you understand what the on-premise that is, you know, bars and restaurants, how they think, how to, you know, be respectful in those spaces. We also say that we believe the hospitality industry is really the star, especially after the years that, you know, the pounding that we've taken during COVID. So it's so important to always be kind of highlighting what hospitality is doing, right? So we both come from hospitality. Um, I spent the last, I know it makes me feel old, but I'll say it. No, you're the, not. The, the last um, 10, 12 years on um, the supplier side, I was an educator for Pernod Ricard um, doing their Bar Smarts program. Um, I was an ambassador for a few different brands, which was lots of fun. And you learn about how to throw big events and, and you know interface with brands and showcase their messaging. And then the last job that I had, I was with Diageo, which is the largest liquor company in the world. In the world. <laughs> And I was running their um, bartender education advocacy platform, which is called World Class. It's the largest cocktail competition in the world. And then Richard Betts called me and I was like, you say jump. I say how high, oh what clip, <laughs> where do you want me to go? I'm there tomorrow. Bye. Wow. That's so you got a hundred too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So you got a hundred too. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, yes. She's actually somebody I'm going to flatter her a little bit here, but she's somebody I've looked up to for a very long time. I bartended actually just down the street at the Chateau Marmont Hotel for, uh, I was there for a total of six years, ran their bar program for uh, about three of those years. And um, she she would come in sometimes and I just thought she was everything I wanted to be. I was like, how do I be you? And I kind of asked her, I'm like, hi, Nate, hi, how do I be you? Um, and she gave me some, some hot tips and, uh, the hot I, tip was go and introduce yourself to people because you're fabulous. They just need to see you. And then I guarantee you, you can have this job. Be, uh, you're smart. You're, you're, you're self-possessed. Go and meet the people. That was my advice. I love Good that advice. So I, um, I, from there moved forward to also to have some, uh, you know, brand, brand, uh, ambassador positions and worked, um, with some, some really wonderful brands taught me a lot. And then I, um, I actually started my own company in 2017 called Sunset Boulevardier, which, uh, grew pretty rapidly. It's actually, uh, we've got, uh, I, I have someone kind of filling in for me while I'm with Comos and then my business partner running it, but we're partnered with proper hospitality groups. So we do all of the cocktail programming for the downtown proper. And then we just did a flip in January of the Santa Monica proper hotel menu. And then we do all of the spirits um, and staff trainings for Melvin's Chi Chi's and Avalon. Uh, and we also, I mean, we have so many projects going on. We have an organic um, biodynamic wine that we're launching next year with all female winemakers. Amy Atwood is uh, importing it and we have um, a, another female sommelier working on it with us that's partnered with uh, Dita Bontis who's been Amazing. done a lot of work in the spirits industry and um, ambassador work and things like that and then uh, and partnered also on a um, gin called Sweet Gwendolyn French Gin, but Comos is my is my main I was focus. Say, right but now. mostly she's yeah. Como. <laughs> I've got a lot of help. I yeah. Comos is my you know my main focus, and I uh, thankfully I've I've got a lot of people I can trust from being in this industry so long to help handle the other projects. Well, did wow. they let you be biased and put Comos? I mean, I I personally would not take this tequila and mix it into a cocktail. So if I were designing a cocktail menu, I might put a flight of what you guys are drinking, the three yeah. that you guys are having right now, but I wouldn't necessarily make a cocktail. Have you made cocktails with this tequila? Yes. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, when I started with this job, I had spent so much time in the craft cocktail space. I thought, oh girl, here we go. I'm getting out of craft cocktails. I'm going straight into luxury. It's going to be, you know, neat pours all day, uh, champagne lifestyle. And everyone was clamoring, where are your cocktails? Where's the cocktail deck? What do you do with this for cocktails? And I'm talking, you know, places like Miami Beach, which never closed down, where so much money has gone towards there's, you know, if you've been there since pandemic, you know, oh, we have, you know, so there is, yeah. there, there's not enough money in the world to charge for something that people won't pay there. So when yeah. I, you know, talk to an account of Miami Beach and say, okay, well, you're, this cocktail is going to cost a hundred dollars. They go good. I need more hundred dollar cocktails on the menu. So I actually ended up making a full cocktail deck for um for our three expressions uh, that people use i did a uh, a cocktail with this extra in Yeho, which which retails for four hundred dollars a bottle uh, for an account in dallas where they come and they smoke your millionaire margarita table side it costs 150 dollars. people don't blink wow. so again like i we never want to get in the way of people's enjoyment and if 
they feel enjoyment to have a real fancy hundred dollar cocktail am i gonna tell them no don't do that absolutely not no <laughs> when you're, when you're so your specialty is bougie bougie your specialty bougie. is bougie i love that and <laughs> I, I feel like me and cassandra are bougie when it comes to certain things for sure and tequila I say that is one of them we are bougie friendly or bougie adjacent Bouge adjacent. Okay, yes. well, when you come to town, we need to take you out for some tequila comas cocktails. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. You see, uh, yeah. I can't I want to pull her. I want to pull you through the screen I so know. badly. Yeah. <laughs> but wait, I want to add to your resumes and like, please let me add this. It's called badassery. <laughs> okay. So when you guys are rattling off your expertise, women in a cocktail male-driven kind of world and experts and owning your own companies and doing menus. And we had um, a mixologist on our show, Rob Floyd, who has 2,500 employees. He does like cruise ships and all wow. this stuff. And he was just talking about the intricacies of this business. It's yeah. no joke. I mean, we drink cocktails. We drink the final product of all your hard work, really. Yeah. You know, we're sitting back after a long day's work, drinking your work. That's what's supposed to happen, right? It should feel effortless. You should not see the effort that goes into hospitality. And that's what, that's why it's hospitality. That's what's so special about the industry, right? It's all of the effort that goes in ahead of time. So that when you come to, to, you know, celebrate the end of the, the day, or you're with your friends, or, you know, you just, you need a place that's a third space to be, that you don't think about all that happened before that or all that happened before what went into your glass you just know you're enjoying it you're in your moment right and and you're enjoying your moment that's that's what it's about I love that I feel like Richard Betts is taking care of us right now like yeah well you know you just said about women and something else that I love to highlight about our company is that we are over 50 percent women in the company which is huge that's in the spirits in the spirits thing. business it is it is next level we I'd imagine very, that the spirits uh, business as a whole is a little bit of the old boys club Oh, it just seems oh like one oh. of those industries that there's still a lot of, I'm going to use a euphemism here and say tradition, uh, but, it, that, but that's more, cute. That's cute. We'll do that. more progressively, <laughs> I would say that so it's probably one of those industries where I just picture a bunch of old white dudes sitting around with like fluffy jackets on in a dark study smoking cigars and talking about uh -huh. their next batch of whiskey that's yeah. like, I mean, that's that's the visualization i get of kind of the liquor industry as a whole yeah and and you're not wrong and and for us with tequila comas it's very deliberate hiring practices we have a very very diverse company. We're a small company, but there's representation for women, for people of color, LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. Like it is, it is a very, um, it, it, and it's purposeful, right? That's the kind of hiring that we're, we're looking to do. Right. And I want to say that's your consumer. Your consumer. Exactly. Is, well, women and minorities in like tequila too. Hello. Yeah. Well, women control 75% of all buying power in the spirits industry. So if you aren't thinking about women, you aren't thinking about people of color, you're not thinking intelligently about your business it's Money. not just the right thing to do but it's also like the cha-ching thing <laughs> my Coins. husband is not know? the one stocking the bar ever right. Right. I mean, like he no, might go no. on a beer run for a tailgate, but if we're getting, if we have an event, if we're having a dinner party, if we're just in town for the weekend and want to see people while we're there, I am the one that's like, get this, do this. And he might add on a few things that he likes, but I, I, I'm the one saying, here's what we are serving the party. That's where yeah, the, right. That's, right. that's sort of the bouge adjacent comes in. Cause I, I really <laughs> love to throw an event, throw a party. Right. And 86% of our listeners are women. I love that. And they are like, we love a cocktail, but I've never on their, they're kind of in the beginning of their tequila journey, some people. And they're just like, you guys make it sound so good, but it's so gross. I'm like, girl, what do you have in your cabinet? And then she's like, <laughs> I'm like yes, no, this is why it's it so gross. It's gold on the bottle. Oh, or so with the worm in it. Remember when that was bougie? Oh, but remember that used to be bougie yeah. back in the day. If you had, went on a date and a guy had a bottle with worm, you're like, oh, he got some coin. It's not, it's not even a worm. <laughs> It's like, it it's like a, yeah, it's because it's got little yeah, it's feet. Larvae. It's got little feet on oh, it. It's, not, God. Oh. it's like a caterpillar. Oh. It's not a worm worm. No, <laughs> no that's no. a pass. Let's get to the extra nail. Hold on. Yeah, to the, and let's I, talk like a little bit. Maybe yeah, I'm subconsciously Rosa, trying to cut you guys off because I'm jealous I don't have it. No, we're going to get just some notes on this, but as you're pouring, 
I want to know what what advice would you give to people that are not as as Sherry mentioned we have a lot of listeners that are on the beginning yeah. of their tequila journey and you guys seem very approachable in you can have your tequila however you want it. You can mix it as a cocktail. You can also drink it as is, or you can maybe have an orange or a grapefruit or something just to bite into. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for people that want to become more comfortable with luxury tequila? I mean, I think, I think, you know, you're really nailing it on the head that it's, uh, there aren't rules. I think that, you know, I think kind of going back to that, like image of that old white dude in the coat, like they create all these very um, specific rules around how to drink and how to do it and add a drop of water. And I think that really figuring out what your palate um, likes is the best way to go about it. So if you, you know, maybe if you, if you've had whiskey before and you know a way you like to drink whiskey, this is an age spirit as well. So it can kind of fit into um, the framework of how you enjoy whiskey. So there's a whiskey cocktail recipe you really like, plug this in. It's going to have a more like vibrance. There's a little bit of that vegetal feel, obviously the influence of the wine, but um, I, I think it kind of comes down to how you how you like to drink. So I, I would say that, you know, if you if you know that drinking booze straight is aggressive to you, try it in an espresso martini, maybe the next time you'll have it with soda water. And then maybe the next time you'll have it on an ice cube and you can kind of navigate where your palate is at. That would be my my advice, because there's not a correct way, in my opinion, of enjoying it. Agreed. Agreed. And I would also say if you're somebody that's like, oh, brown spirits, oh, I don't like whiskey. Right. Start with the Cristalinos. The Cristalinos have those barrel notes in there, that big vanilla butterscotch, right? Vanilla is the number one flavor that human beings love. We just love it. We love it. We love it. And so it's got all of those notes in there, but it doesn't have that kind of tan. And, and again, like that yeah. tequila face. Mm -hmm. So start there. And then, you know, as you expand your journey outwards, you'll start to be able to pick up nuances. It's like nobody started out like, loving a, a big IPA or whatever. We were oh, like, yeah. oh, Bud Light, you yeah. know? <laughs> oh, now maybe Bud Heavy. Like, you know, you've got to introduce things to your brain so they make new neural pathways that they're processing what flavors mm -hmm, they are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. slowly. So don't expect overnight, like, oh, great. Now I now I love and understand tequila. Like you ladies have spent time doing this and, and expanding your palates. And so just give yourself time to explore. I agree with that. Now we're expanding to this $400 bottle. Yes, so I want to hear just, all about it. So a $400 bottle tequila can be purchased. Mm -hmm. You just have to not purchase your Starbucks <laughs> or your McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all gas must be have a gas All operator. that shit has junk in it anyway. Oh. Listen, if you're talking about leveling up in your wellness game, cut out the preservatives, the synthetic ingredients, the sugar in Starbucks, and instead of dumping your money into that, put it into something clean. The extra Añejo is not charcoal filter. It's aged in a, a combination of uh, French oak um, white wine nut barrels from Napa and American whiskey barrels. So uh, we, oh. we did a little bit of both on this one, which gives it this really unique complexity. I get so many uh, flavor notes of like toasted pecans, orange oil, and then the finish has this beautiful, bright, green, vibrant flavor from the roasted agave. That's something too, you know, there are lots of shortcuts and choices that people can um, make when distilling their Blanco base that is used before aging tequilas. And, you know, as Rio was sort of touching on earlier, we are not taking any shortcuts. And, you know, she was saying some of the, the, the more expensive ways, it's also the longer way of making things, but we are roasting our agave and that is concentrating the bricks, the level of sugars. And I feel like in this tequila, because of the combination of aging it in the American whiskey and the French oak uh, white wine barrels, it, the, the balance and the flavor is just, it almost tastes like you're drinking like on your first sip, it's like, it's kind of like a whiskey, but it's so different from a whiskey. And it's, it's really mind blowing. It's like, I, when I first had a sip, I couldn't, it, it tasted like it wasn't even a category of spirit I had tried before. It wasn't a tequila, it wasn't a whiskey. It was, it was just like a new thing that I didn't know existed. Yeah, It's, it's very tasty. We did an episode comparing whiskey versus tequila. And it's actually cool. one of our biggest, um, one of our top episodes, because I do think a lot of whiskey drinkers will go to the extra anejos. They kind of don't play with the Blancos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're, they want bold. Right. They want heavy, heavy notes that they can have with a cigar. Have I'm going to specify like the rye and bourbon drinkers. 
make yeah, that specifically, transition. Yes, yeah, specifically. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, this yeah. this for a Macallan 18 drinker or let's say a Japanese whiskey, like somebody, if you're lucky enough to find yourself some Yamazaki 18 mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. I miss you. Um, <laughs> you know, this has some of those really beautiful, you know, lighthearted kind of notes. It's not some big extra charred bourbon barrel. Like, you know, it looks like almost like molasses in your glass, right? It, the color is actually, you know, almost like a straw color yeah, to it, light. which is, which is really interesting. But then all those barrel notes are there. It is, it is in fact, if you're into that kind of thing, really nice with the cigar. See, I like that. What is Richard Betts out of these three, we just tasted it. And you can't say he loves all of them equally because we all have a favorite child. Everybody does. Everyone does. <laughs> I only have <laughs> one. So it's your favorite. <laughs> well, well, you get a time. You can like your husband better than your child sometimes and vice versa. That's true. That's These true. are real things. That's, That's true. very true. Yeah. Which one out of these three that we're tasting here is his favorite or that he tends to lean towards? Without a doubt, the Cristalino. Okay. You know, with without a doubt, the Cristalino, okay. because it's so tricky to get that balance of richness without heat, without heaviness. And so, you know, he tinkered with this for a long time, and he's especially proud of what this brings to the Cristalino category. And we really do think that this is a benchmark within within the Cristalino category. So he, when I'm with him, that's what he's drinking. I mean, he, he loves the Rosa, don't get me wrong. I've seen him do an extra, but it's the Cristalino for sure. Yeah. Well, when we just, uh, we just said it, had a, a summit in New York and when we saw Richard, he um, was, you know, really talking about how he enjoys the Cristalino all over the world, all over the U.S., everywhere he and his uh, wife travel. He He's like, I'm. this is what I'm drinking. It's not, he's not just making it, he's consuming it. Oh, no, the man drinks tequila. Depletion. <laughs> well, you can tell this is not a business move. To touch on this lastly, I just really wanted to say this because I do think as tequila advocates, we, you know, there's a lot of celebrity driven tequilas, right? And so people always ask us like, what do you think of this new tequila? I'm like, I haven't tried it because they're not a tequila. They're yeah. just, you know, whatever the reason. So it's kind of like, sometimes you get inundated in pop culture with the people, you know, and you're like, oh, like the rock has a tequila. So you're like, oh, I love the rock and I love the tequila. How does Como's carve out a space in a heavily driven pop culture world that says, Hey guys, do we have another 30 minutes to talk? <laughs> I have ideas. The Rock is also very open that he's he doesn't drink. He says, I'm not a drinker. I don't drink. Yes. But he has a tequila brand. So it doesn't always make a ton of sense. And So I don't really follow that element of it, but that's a great question. Yeah, my brother's up in the Hamptons and he said that Eva Longoria has a new tequila. Yes, and that they yep. have a van with her face on it up in the Hamptons that'll like drive you around. That's what they're doing this summer. <laughs> And then Kevin Hart has one. And I swear Kevin Hart has a tequila because he must've been mad at the rock. Yeah, You know, they have that relationship. They're neighbors. Um, You know, we just have to be consistent in what we do. We know what we're doing is, is elegant. We know what we're doing is, is, you know, beautiful and delicious. We give back to the community of tequila. You know, if you know Comos, you know Comos and we, you know, we're just going to continue along that path. Um, We did, however, for uh, April Fool's Day, send out a um, a press announcement saying that uh, we had gotten a celebrity for our tequila to our whole team. And it was David Hasselhoff. (laughs) (laughs) Don't hassle my tequila. (laughs) Yeah, if he doesn't very work very out, Sherry and I would love to jump well, we in. Would, and be a oh, and look, hats all off. Uh, we would yeah. totally put on a gown because this, this, this is what's interesting about the brand. I know I keep saying lastly, but lastly, 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 what's interesting about the brand is that you do think screen siren when you drink this. That's just because Sabrina's here. I, <laughs> is that what it is? Yes. I was, she gives like, those vibes. You're giving me the vibe right up. And I'm like, Green siren a little naughty, a little nice, oh, yeah. bold, yeah. but kind, yeah. you know, and I love it, I, but that. you get that. And I do think brands, and I am a huge person where you don't always need a spokesperson because I think we're living in a world where I need someone to help me do this instead of just doing it mm-hmm. and doing it well. Mm-hmm. And it's like quality over quantity, you know, you can grow slow and grow fat and then growing slow is actually sometimes growing fast. And I think yeah. people don't equate that with that, but in, if you think about life, it's like the snail gets to his destination. Sure. So does the turtle. Yeah, It may not be in the time that we want it to, but I think sometimes you have to grow slow to get the tastemakers to really micro target who you're trying to get to okay. the tastemakers. Cause I feel like word of mouth is probably the biggest marketing tool I've ever 
followed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No banner has ever gotten me to do anything. Right. And I mean, we work have out a great well. team. We have a great team too. Yeah. So that's also very, very important, you know, on our marketing side, on our sales side, our leadership believes in us. And so, as you say, like we are able to grow this brand in a slow, organic way, really helping people understand what it is rather than just putting a billboard, you know, on, on Sunset Boulevard and, you know, being a flash in the the pan because we, and the team believes in the brand. And I think that stands out uh, having, you know, worked for a lot, you know, with and a lot of other brands, uh, it it does vary. And, you know, it's everyone on our team believes in and has emotional stock in in its growth. And you want the quality to speak for itself because you don't want it to be just another trend or fad. We see that a lot in nutrition and diet and foods and, and obviously in the liquor and beverage industry as well. So I'm going to cheers to you guys. Thank you so much. I'm so jealous that I couldn't be there. I'm excited for sure to come back and actually try it. And thank you guys for joining yes. us and, and advocating for promos and tequila in general and educating us all a little bit on how to elevate our experience. Guys, thank you for listening to Team Tequila Talks with Tarion and Cassandra and our special guests from Promos. Like, subscribe, do all the social media and internet things and things you like to do with your thumbs. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Thank you.